It was November 2000, and my wife and I found ourselves in a very remote part of the Amazon jungle trying to find the Yanomami Indians. They're very hard to get to, and so they've got very little contact with the outside world. Is ours? Yeah. We found a guide who said he knew how to find them. He had lived with them. And we went on this journey. The Anomami are the last large group of relatively unacculturated Indians left in the world. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to find out what all the Anomami were like and to make generalizations. So I decided I would really focus my efforts on finding one village to see how the outside world had encroached upon their lifestyle. What we knew about the Yanomami was from anthropology books and Napoleon Chagnon studies and films. They had a reputation for being the fierce warriors. We're both getting older. You can get heat stroke. You can get bitten by a venomous snake, overcome by exhaustion, killed. They, they build a house like this because they had a lot of, lot of ethics. If one try attack here, they uh -huh. got a place for escape. Uh -huh. Because normally, they are, they are, when they got a war, they attack in the evening, in the night, not by day. The Yanomami went to their other Shibono. So tomorrow, we're going to go to another Shibono up the Siapa River. And uh, by that time, we're going to be deep, deep into the jungle. I mean, we're pretty deep in the jungle now, but it's, uh, it's interesting. As we're sleeping there at night, I'm feeling like, what if they come home? Here we are, we're not invited. You don't know if they're going to be upset. Shoot first and ask questions later. Can I get the banana trees? The next day, we found the village community garden and met the chief, Tomas. He invited us to his village. They're putting up like a handrail. The logs are covered with moss. They're very slippery, and they can dig in with their toes, but we're wearing hiking shoes, so they're doing this in our <laughs> to help us. It turned out that the other Shibono was actually a small village of thatched huts. Part of the year they lived there, and part of the year they moved back to their more traditional Shibono. We stayed for a week. They were incredibly open to us and let us video anything we wanted. Tomas was in charge of the village. His brother Guillermo was the big chief, but Guillermo wasn't there and left Tomas in charge. We had to bring gifts. When other Yanomami visit the Yanomami, they exchange gifts. Uh, our guide knew what they would want. It's a delicate thing because since they have nothing, the material goods we bring have much greater value than we would associate with them, things we wouldn't even blink about. They were significant because when you have nothing, uh, those things are a big deal. They were still hunter-gatherers, semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers. They also grew some of their own food. And Yanomami Gorata? Yanomami Gorata. They also grew tobacco, which they mixed with ashes and placed in a wad under their bottom lip. If they do it all day, they crazy for tobacco. But for tobacco like this. They navigated the waterways by paddling. They had seen motors. They wanted a motor. They had metal pots, 
Fish hooks were very valuable. We brought them fish hooks. They were very appreciative. And they had plastic jugs for carrying water. They had machetes. It's hard to imagine living in the jungle without a machete. It creates such an improvement in terms of getting food, preparing food. When the first missionaries encountered the Yanomami in the early 1950s, they brought machetes as gifts. Large groups of Indians, whole villages, moved down to the waterways to be closer to the missionaries, to be closer to traders, to have access to things that made their lives so much easier. They didn't know much about the outside world, but they knew enough to know that there was a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. There was this desire. Our boatman took his gun out, and a guy named Blas, he was just enamored. He wanted this gun. But I thought, how is he going to get money to get a gun? The only way they could get money, really, was they smoked fish and, and traded it. From what we saw, this group of Yanomami were self-sufficient, but they'd already started changing. Tomas's son got sick. In the Yanomami world, bad spirits cause disease. So to heal him, a shaman used a hallucinogen called Yopo to communicate with the spirit world. But they knew about aspirin, and they asked us for some to give to the baby. These people that we spent time with, we got to know pretty well. We certainly made a connection with some of the individuals in that village. I remember, well, Tomas, the village headman, and Francisco, who also spoke a little Spanish, and Blas. So where are these people now? What are they doing? So we go back in 2011, yeah, good. and we hire Juan Carlos to be our guide again. Your protein. This tastes like lemon. This tastes like lemon, these ants? Mm -hmm. Are these alive? How do I eat it? Just pop in your mouth. The whole thing. Yeah. Lemon. No sweet yuca. Going into a jungle like that, you've got to feel comfortable with your guide. There's no way without Juan Carlos that we could go visit the Anomami and get any sense of who they really were. Juan Carlos was a person that the Anomami could trust and relate to, and he had spent time with the Anomami and knew them, not as an outsider coming in, but as, as one of them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Poi Monica. Yeah, Poi Monica. Mm -hmm. He said he liked it. Wapuhi, I won. Yo quiero. Away. Away is yes. How long are they in town for? When we arrived in Puerto Ayacucho, we immediately noticed that there were Yanomami in the street and they were buying things. This was totally different than 10 years earlier. You know, my first thought was where are they getting the money? How are they getting here? There were slogans on the walls that were all about the Indians being part of Venezuelan society. And that was new. Beforehand, the Indians were, I think, considered second-class citizens. Before we left Puerto Ayacucho for Yanomami land, we visited a place called Salud Yanomami. It was a school training Yanomami to be healthcare workers in the field. This didn't exist 10 years earlier. ¿Cuántos alumnos van a tener? 40, 42. ¿Y qué van a estudiar? Right after our first visit, the government had restricted access to the Amazonas region. Hugo Chavez had kicked all the anthropologists out. They'd kicked the missionaries out. They gave the Anomami the vote. So the government went into that vacuum. There are very few places in the world that are really isolated anymore. The Anomami happened to live in one of those areas. We saw that the government health program had reached much deeper into the jungle than the missionaries ever got. 
they were using helicopters to get to remote villages that would take over two weeks to reach by land. Monica, they want Monica to sit in the back. They, they waited it this way. Uh, the pilot doesn't look old enough to have a driver's license. <laughs> They had to send the boat and all of our provisions four days earlier from Puerto Ayacucho to a remote military outpost called San Carlos de Rio Negro. So you can imagine, before motors, when people were just paddling, it would have been weeks and weeks to make that journey. Ten thousand years ago, we all lived more or less like the Anamami, and the history of our hunter-gatherer past was never written. So when the last of the hunter-gatherers are gone, that part of our history, our shared history, will be gone forever. It's much bigger. You think they got it, they got it, the electricity? Yeah. It's unbelievable. We had come all this way, and we arrived at the village. I thought maybe they would remember you. And they wouldn't let us shoot. And I took out this picture book I had made of our visit in 2000. When they saw that, everything changed. They had never seen anything like this. This was a mirror into their past. Macarino is the acting chief's son. He was 10 years old the last time we visited. He was a curious kid. He followed us around a lot. We were hoping to see Tomas again. He was in charge of the village last time, but they told us that Tomas was sick and in a hospital in Puerto Ayacucho. And just like last time, the official village chief, Guillermo, was also away. Tell him he doesn't look a day older than when I saw him 10 years ago. <laughs> It's unbelievable that now they have uh, street lights and they're wired for electricity, even though they don't have wired electricity, they have a generator that works. Uh, the government's obviously made an investment here in uh, the quality of life. There's a school. Floss was the teacher, the very first member of the community that we interviewed. He had spent time outside of the village, so he had seen the outside world. He started talking about the TVs, DVDs, as if he lived in San Francisco. TV, television. And after we did the interview, we went to his hut. He had nothing. So we quickly understood these were not things he had, these were things he wanted. Ahí se prende planta aquí. Pasen, necesita luz. ¿Y cuándo necesitas luz? No, ahorita no, no tiene nada porque se falló. No hay, no hay batería, no hay gasoil, no hay aceite. ¿Dónde está la batería? Batería, no sé, batería se vendió por ahí. ¿La vendieron? Sí, sí. Y funcionaba antes. Un ratiquito, como por ahí, como 20 minutos. Y después, tarde mismo, no prende más. Y se prende, cinco minutos, se hace apaga. It's very strange because the teacher don't know, you know, it's my friend Blas, right here, he don't know writing, 
good in Spanish. How you put one teacher? It's not put for the, it's put for the mayor. It's not put for the education ministry. If you want to teach the children in your, in your village, you have to know it. He asked me yesterday about mathematics. He don't know nothing about mathematics. Maybe they put it over there to get both. We have an election before, uh, in December. It's for that. You know, it's a small village. It's not necessary a lot of big poles. Don't need a big generator. And you come back after three years, and it's still like this, because the election finished. I saw one time, in one election, in La Esmeralda, one party gave me 20,000 Bolivar to the Yanomamis, like this vote. See my, my eyes. In our visit in 2000, we showed Tomas a picture dictionary. Tomas had spent time with the missionaries and was one of the few people in the village who spoke Spanish. I wanted to know what was familiar to him. They had seen planes go overhead, so he was able to identify the plane in the picture book. He had more trouble when I showed him the picture of a spoon. I think it's a, it's a paddle. <laughs> Tell me the paddle. In 2011, it was totally different than 2000. I asked Macarino to look at the picture dictionary. Macarino was familiar with virtually everything. Bicicleta. Película. My first impression of Macarino was he had lived in the modern world and he was dressed like we dress. Kind of like someone I might meet on the street at home. I thought it was a total change. Yo estuve en Puerto Ayacucho estudiando en universidad. Entonces aprendí el español, la verdad es. Y yo yo tuve haciendo curso de medicina, enfermería también. Por ejemplo, si tiene si tiene neumonía se aplica el tratamiento acitromicina y amoxicilina, solo que viene ampolla eso. Lo que dan inyección, eso, todo eso. Tiene que tomar la muestra de, de cota gruesa en, para examinar a ver qué tiene mi enfermedad, o tiene el tipo A, o tiene paludismo, eso. Ese sí, los chamanes no se puede curar que es enfermedad, cuál es. Ajá. Otra cosa, hay un persona que, que está con brujo, ¿verdad? Que está con brujo. Ese sí los chamanes lo curan. Ese sí lo curan por, por cinco días. Por cinco días lo curan. Ellos son brujos. Mi papá es brujo. Mi tío brujo. When we first got there, you know, it appeared that they really made tremendous progress. As we spent time with them, we realized that day-to-day -day life was not that different from in the year 2000. This was like a Potemkin village. What it looked like was not really what it was. We were all hunter-gatherers 10,000 years ago. It's only recently that we've become computer programmers. They spent a lot of time just getting food. Nada.
Está nuevo. Entonces, allá, Uiriana, cuando se acaba comida y va a mudar para acá otra vez para hacer una fiesta aquí. Tú sabes que tenemos ahí conozco por aquí. Hay yuca, hay pichón de plátano, todo, todo, todo ahí está en la sembra. Y va a hacer una mañoco aquí, hace una fiesta Hoy aquí todo. Bien. Este. He said there are these biting fleas that uh, create abscesses. Mm -hmm. You make eggs. See, they make eggs inside you, your feet. Eggs. Eggs. And when you take out, you see the eggs and the black thing. Aha. Uh -huh. That's something to avoid. Muy dolor de pie, pues. Cuando te entra en la lengua, dolor de pie. Muy peligroso, se va chupa sangre ahí. Ok, so how about we get the hell out of here? Vamos. <laughs> Mónica, listo. Sí. Tú viste con huevo. What? It had eggs. I can see them. No, you can see them. Let me see. They're right here on my hand. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I feel some... Okay. Esta? Mm -hmm. oh, esta? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We first got there, we thought, oh, they were so much more advanced with them. We realized that day-to-day -day life was more or less like it had been, but expectations had changed and the knowledge of the outside world had changed dramatically. Nosotros necesitamos un plato para comer y compramos una cucharilla para comer. Necesita comprar olla para cocinar. Ese mismo todo lo compramos, necesitamos nosotros. Ah, necesita a comprar comida, necesita a comprar café, azúcar, arroz, arepa, aceite para fritar. Yo necesito machete, chor, franera, y comida, y con dinero, pues, con plata. ¿Y, y, ¿Dónde conseguiste el dinero? Yo conseguí, pedía a, por gobernación, allá hay ca, alcalde, pero siempre que yo pedí allá. A, a, ok. ¿Tú vas allá a, a, a buscar dinero para trabajar o solamente para pedir? Pedir más nada. Pedir. O sea, porque yo estoy pobre. When we were there 10 years earlier, I don't think they thought of themselves as poor. They didn't have anything, but they seemed to have everything they needed. Zapato, grema para que. Grema y zapato en colonia. Todo. El cloro para que el agua con ropa. ¿Cuál te gusta más? ¿La escopeta o la arco flecha? Sí, flecha. la flecha? Sí. ¿Y la hay more de, de arma? ¿Por qué? Porque ese propio. Ese propio original flecha. I asked them about their kids. They said, well, it'll be up to them. Si tu hijo quisiera vivir en Puerto Yacucho, ¿qué pensarías tú? No, nada, pero ellos no piensan. No deja que se vaya. Ah, deja que se vaya, yo pienso así. Si se va, no se I'm very worried because after a year, I think, a, a year I don't come here, it's a new generation change. Because it's so the old people keep their cultures. If this new generation change, what happened? Ten years, you come in, but ten years here. Like the history I tell you, the Yanomami in Sejal, the mayor give you an engine, and they go to, to fishing to the Caciquiare by Pado. When they broke in the engine, they said, Juan Carlos, you can take the engine to Puerto Yacucho to fit in, because now we cannot go to the Caciquear to fishing. We don't have an engine, but before they were by paddle. You don't know television, you don't need a television. You know? If you don't know the, for example, the car, you don't need a car. If they don't never see the engine, they don't need an engine. Because the Yanomami who live in, uh, in Putaco, they don't know, they don't need an engine, but they don't know the engine. Now the mayor give a job, to, uh, now they got a commissioners. Tomás is the commission for something, 
uh, uh, Guillermo is commissioned for another thing, the other is commissioned for another thing, and they make money. I see Tomás a lot of times in Puerto Ayacucho, much more about here. I saw Guillermo a lot of times in Puerto Ayacucho. They said they go make business, something like this, for, the, for, the, for his town, for his villa, something like that. I really feel bad, let me tell you. See this, see this, see this culture destroyed like this here. For that, I wanted high Orinoco keeping like this, big forest, very hard to go there, you know, to like this. It's very difficult to the people going through there and change this culture. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. You have a nice house. You have medical clinic. You have school for your children. It makes your life easier. Why shouldn't they have the same things that you have? Here? Yeah. ¿Cuál es el problema con la vida fácil? No, para, porque la, para su cultura no, es, no debería, es cambiar su cultura. Y, el, y cambiar una cultura es algo delicado, es algo grave. Mira este. The government created jobs for the people in the village. Mira este certificado. Tomas and Guillermo were commissioners. Blas was the teacher. Some guy got paid a little money to cut the grass. Juan Carlos also told us that Yanomami of retirement age were getting small pensions, including the women. For years, the missionaries had told the Yanomami that it was shameful to go around naked, and they gave them clothes to wear. But the missionaries were gone. So now they needed to buy their clothes. The government gave them a motorboat. That was much easier than paddling to get everywhere. But now they needed to get gasoline. They also needed gasoline for the two-day trip by motorboat to San Carlos, which was the only place to buy gasoline. After hearing Blas and Francisco talk about all the things they wanted, the pots and pans, the food, the cologne, the Clorox, they didn't seem to have much more than they had 10 years earlier. If some people were receiving salaries and others were getting small pensions, where did the money go? There was no store in the village to buy anything. For a while, this was a complete mystery. For the Yanomami women, life had not changed much at all. They're still responsible for the children, the cooking. They tended to stay home. They did not speak Spanish, or if they did, it was very limited. You did see some little girls going to school, but I think once they reached puberty, they were married, they had children. They were much less aware of what was going on or of the outside world. Adrián. Adrián. ¿Quién es? Ella. Mi papá. Colombiano. Mi mamá, Amanda. We forget how accustomed we are to photographs and to seeing pictures of people we love who are gone. Amanda was seeing her son for the first time since he died. Do you have more of this photo? Do you have more? I tell her I'll, I will find the photo. <laughs> Oh, 
I was surprised just how many of the kids in the photos were no longer with us. When we went in 2000, you could see kids who definitely looked ill. In that respect, it wasn't surprising that there were kids who died. Just kind of was not expecting so many of them to have died. We were sleeping in our hammocks, and we heard the shaman chanting, chanting, chanting. There was a very sick baby, and the shaman was trying to heal the baby. In 2000, they had no connection to the outside world, but this time they had a radio. The baby continued to be sick, and a couple days later, they used the radio to call for a medevac boat. Because this boat has very powerful motors, it actually makes the trip in less than a day. The baby was evacuated to San Carlos and then flown by military transport to Puerto Ayacucho. We have a lot of comfort and things to make our life easier. Is it wrong to say, no, you shouldn't have this? I'm just saying, think about it. 10,000 years, they live the same way. And for then, the next 90 years, things started changing. And then in 10 years, things like <clears throat> dramatically change from hunter-gatherers to, I need my cell phone. I don't lie, but it's, 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 it's realize. It's the change. You know? it's, it's the you, inevitable. You, we can do nothing. But these people came down here for a better life. They're not going back. They're not going back, that's for sure. They're not going back, but they haven't left yet either. They're still practicing traditions they practiced 10 years before, and for who knows how many hundreds or thousands of years before that. They still grind the bones of their dead and drink the ashes to help them move on to the spirit world. And they still use the hallucinogen yopo that puts them in touch with the spirit world for healing or to protect the community from its enemies. Quieres tú aprender ser chamán? No, no por momento. O sea, yo soy menor todavía. Cuando estoy 35 años, ahí sí. Si yo no puedo con Yopo, pinga. <ríe> es muy fuerte. Tienes que aguantar. Yopo. Este. Este, este lo prepara, lo quema. In 2000, our primary connection to the village was Tomas, 
But Tomas wasn't in with Yanawi. Tomas estaba enfermo. Estaba sufriendo hace tiempo porque que lleva eh, 12 años cuando estaba sufriendo. Y por eso está para allá cucho ahorita. Está para hospitalizado. ¿Y, ¿Y podemos ir al hospital para visitar a él? Sí, sí. Sí, sí cuando, cuando, cuando tú llegas ahí en Porto Ayacucho y puedes a, a ir a visitar con él. Ahí está su hermano todo, y su familia todo ahí. Su hermano mayor y su hermano menor otros. Por ahí está todo, Guillermo y Marín. Por ahí está en Ayacucho todo. We were leaving and it was time to give the gifts. Ten years earlier, I remember how important the gift giving was because they had nothing. Now they still didn't have anything, but they had much more awareness of what they lacked. But even though the gifts were probably perceived as less valuable, the biggest gift we brought was a 50-gallon drum of gasoline. Their aspirations for material goods now were much greater than they had been before. Fish hooks were great before, but they're not like DVD players. Okay. Gracias a Dios que lo, te acompañé por ahí, otra parte. Eso, oíste. Bueno, ese era todo. Click. No, no. Gracias. Otro año más. Bueno. Olga. Bueno. Sí, quedamos no, pendientes. I was disappointed that Tomas wasn't in the village. I had seen how much the people in Widyonawi had changed in terms of their awareness of the outside world. Now Tomas was living in the outside world and his family was with him. We needed to go to Puerto Ayacucho and see how he's adapted, how he's changed. His family's there, how are they living? Blas was hitching a ride with us to San Carlos. Because of the lack of gasoline, no one had been able to pick up the pension money. Blas was coming to get it and bring it back to the village. Pensionado de Gobernación. ¿Quiere comunicar ese marín? Yeah. Mira, ahí está cinco personas. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Ay, ¿Qué problema tienen ellos? Pero él comió dinero con ellos. ¿Eh? El pensionado. ¿Él cobró el dinero? Sí, en Ayacucho. ¿Y qué quiere que se lo mande? Sí, para que preguntar con él cuánto hay... ¿Cuánto dinero hay? Tú, tú, cuando sacaste el dinero de ellos, para que no venga a cobrar con ellos. Yo voy a avisar con ese Marí. Marí, es que, al, al que cuando le retirar el dinero de ellos, si tú me dices, para que no venga más para acá a cobrar con ella. Le voy a sí, decir con él. Es. Pensionado, 300, para la gobernación. ¿Mensual? Ajá. Una quincena, 300, más 300, 600 mil bolívares. Dos Cada meses. dos meses. Cada dos meses. No, un millón... Un millón cuatrocientos veintiocho mensual alcaldía, un millón cincuenta y dos mil bolívares. Más dos millones quinientos. Blas's confusion about the pension amounts wasn't that surprising, really. The Anamami language has only three numbers. One, two, and many. Math isn't that important in the jungle, but it's pretty important for dealing with money. Lo que dice Cliff tiene razón. Sí. Porque si no te llamo el papel, él te puede llamar por radio. Mira, la pensión la tengo ya, la cobré y voy al, a la comunidad a llevarla. Así que speak for the radio. They got the radio there. Speak to him. Yes. Ok. Mañana te puede llamar a la comunidad. Usted sube mañana. Sí, sí. We found the missing pension thing confusing 
and we promised Blas we would follow up on it with Marin when we got back to Puerto Ayacucho. We were told that Tomas was in the hospital and we thought he could lead us to Marin. Tomas was not there. But the baby who was medevaced was there. Anda mejor? Más o menos. More or less, a little bit, is that what he's saying? We found this baby in a hospital bed, everything going for this child. We learned the baby had encephalitis. It was still very touch and go, but at least this baby had more of a chance. We had heard about a guest house where some of the Anamami were staying. It was an opportunity to talk to some of them, and we also hoped we'd find Tomas there. We didn't, but we met a young man named Federico. Miguel Ángel Pérez, yo fui uno de los primeros docentes que llegó allá en el municipio Alto Orinoco. La verdad es que vienen muchos Yanomami, la mayoría Yanomami para acá, para Ayacucho, a hacer su diligencia, que no pueden realizar ni hacer allá en el municipio. Para venir para acá es muy problemático y para retornar peor todavía. Entonces no tienen dónde llegar, no tienen quien los oriente. Entonces ellos llegan en mi casa. Aquí a veces hay hasta 40, 60 Yanomami conmigo. A veces se le acaba el dinero y no hayan cómo retornar, cómo, cómo, dónde conseguir dinero. Tienen que andar pidiendo comida por ahí. Eso es doloroso. A mí me da sentimiento y me duele eso. Ver a esa gente por ahí de casa en casa pidiendo comida. Entonces yo lo ayudo en la medida de mi posibilidad. Por este teléfono pase diligencia. Ante ayer yo lo compré. ¿Qué hace normalmente con el teléfono? Con este teléfono, lo que tenemos cada teléfono. Hay, hay música de MP3 también. También se manda mensajes, ¿no? ¿Te gustaría vivir acá? ¿Aquí? Sí. No. ¿Por qué no? ¿Sabe por qué? Esa ciudad no es de nosotros, ¿no? Allá en Mavaca, esa es comunidad de nosotros. Este sí le gusta. La comunidad de nosotros. Sí. Federico introduced us to Gabriel a Yanomami who lived full-time in Puerto Ayacucho and knew a lot of Yanomami in town. We were surprised to learn that he spoke fluent English. I'm the only one who, who's living out here. Well, I, I haven't forgot my, my culture, my traditional stuff. The missionaries got to know me. In about 2006, I stayed with them because my dad died. My grandfather always tells me the story, how, how is my tradition and my culture. So uh, from him, I could remember everything. And it's because I'm out here doesn't mean that I'm going to just for totally forget it. That's why the government says, says we don't want some guys like uh, from guys from, from Americans to go up there because we don't know if they're putting putting some things in their mind to change their life. The, the word of God came in the village, and that's the only one that the people have been changed. But they didn't change their culture. And I just want to prepare, see what God's going to give me. Because I'm not the only one who's preparing. God is the one who's, who's telling me to do, and I can't take another options that I'm not supposed to do. Like I always say, I have to put this in God's hand. Necesita iglesia para orar a salvar. Ella no mames, cuando hay pe enfermo hay para que salvar. Por eso quiere iglesia, para orar, para que perdona a nosotros. Necesita luz, necesita haber televisor, Necesita escuchar una música. Aquella vez tiene una freezer para mandar el aire. 
que necesita para tomar agua fría. ¿Tienes miedo de perder sus tradiciones? Mm -mm. No. Nada. I want to be civilized, but I'm still going to be Yanomama. Always. When we think of getting money, we think of working. We have to work, to work, we have to have skills. This is all my job, this is what I do here. Sometimes I mop, I have to clean the, the bathroom. It's not that hard though. They got all these kind of toy stories and all these. Well, these are expensive though. They're about one million, 155. Gabriel made a choice, and his choice was to live in Puerto Ayacucho. I always claim... The Yanomami keep on telling us that they're not going to lose their traditions, yet I get the sense that his daughter's going to be Yanomami not by lifestyle, but just by birth. I have my daughter here, and she was born in here, and I can't take her back, because it would be hard, so I need to keep on going and working here. Meeting Federico and Gabriel, I wasn't optimistic about the future of the Yanomami. The allure of money and what it can get us is very powerful and universal. But I see how indigenous people are treated all over the world when they enter the money economy. They're at the bottom of the totem pole. What struck me most was that the Yanomami we met seemed unaware of the forces brought by the introduction of money. It was as if they were being carried on a strong current that was taking them towards some unknown place. Juan Carlos ran into Marin at the bank. Marin was getting money from his government account. Juan Carlos made arrangements for all of us to meet at his office. We'd like to see Tomas. Okay. So, Tomas, well, there it is. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not Nada, por eso toma sufre, pero no quiere estar hospitalizado. Marin was taking us to see Tomas, and we were finally going to meet their older brother Guillermo, the big chief of the village. We were walking to this encampment. There was a, a little creek there where the kids were swimming. It was a different lifestyle. They're still sleeping in hammocks, but it was not living in the jungle. Most of the day would be spent normally getting food. They bought their food. We got the sense that they were just liking living in the city, and they were clearly accustomed to that. When we first got there, Guillermo was emphatic that we had to turn our cameras off. Until we brought the picture book out. And then again, they were just totally curious about this flashback 10 years. Hello. <laughs> Tomas didn't look sick, really. We were wondering, you know, what the story was, and we asked Tomas. Ah, 
Este y aquel otro. Okay. So he wants this one. Uh, and the other one. Este es mi sobrino y mi hija. Yeah, Guillermo wants. No, I understand. Guillermo wants this one. Podemos. Podemos. Darlos. Copia. Copia. Sí. This to me that we are use it. The people there to make videos and feel. I said we don't use anybody. We ask him. We respect the people. Everything we promised, we did. Said, he said to me, okay, the next time, you have to speak to me. And you pay to me, and you do everything with me. Cash. It's a cash, cash. Para ti. Mando glas. Gente de su comunidad. Que no han cobrado. Blas me pregunta a usted. A mí? Sí. Este Blas quiere saber del dinero de esta gente. Sí. Para que le avise por radio. Ya lo dije. Ya, ¿Ya lo dije ayer, sí. ¿Ya hablaste con él? Sí, ya Aquí lo dije. Te okay. Ya lo comuniqué ayer. Pues dice, guarda el papel ya. Uh -huh. Te explique por, por teléfono. Ok. Mañana a las 10. Tomás, otra vez. En, do, en 10 años más. Otra vez. En 10 años voy a visitar en su comunidad. Ok. Si no muere, pues, más si no... viajo. Juan Carlos calls Guillermo the Yanomami Mafia. We never found out anything definitive about the pension money. They had asked for a copy of all the photos for themselves, so we had to go to a photo shop. And then when I gave it to them, as, gave it to Marine as a gift, then he wanted money. So I thought, okay, this guy's figured out, he's figured out, well, you know, if I ask, maybe I'll get it. If I say it's not enough, maybe I'll get more. Marin, Guillermo, Tomas, they got that the ticket to success in their new world was money. And they had figured out that you didn't have to work in a toy store to get money. One thing that struck me is that this was somehow unsustainable. Without the government providing funds for the Anamami to live in the outside world, they would all have to be like Gabriel. The change is happening to all of them, but in very different ways. And I hope that it doesn't all crash down on them. You know, if you forget for a moment that they're Yanomami, they're really no different than we are. Their situation is very different. Their traditions are different, but they love their kids. They want to be warm when it's cold. Greed, generosity, those are all things that we have, that they have. This is a moment in time that's going to pass, and this history will be gone forever. I don't know how it's going to transpire, but I know that 100 years from now, the Anamami are not going to be living in the jungle the way they are now. From our standpoint and our perspective, yes, it is a loss. But I do feel like this is something that they're choosing for themselves. I can understand why they do want medicine. I can understand why they do want more comfortable living situations. This question, is it good, is it bad? It's both. It's neither. It just is. Muy linda. Mm. Milena. Uh -huh.